Hi, this is Billy Bean here with a World News Update. Today's date, May 2nd, 2024. Time, about 5 p.m. Texas, episode 156. So, some of the things we'll be covering. A Near X and Auroras. Jakarta Sea Rises. A, another WEF Bites the Dust. Israel. And Russia to circle Ukraine forces, MI6 warns Ukraine. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot, Subscriber, Hal Turner, War News 24-7, Bloomberg, Space Weather, Business Insider, Plus. So let's get started. Okay, we had some information this afternoon. Uh, two CMEs came off of the sun today, late this afternoon to multiple small CMAs to combine to produce. Initially, it was to be a G2. And then a little bit later in the afternoon, a NOAA warning, uh, about 2 p.m. this afternoon, uh, additional um, an M9.5 near an X flare, also erupted off the sun to produce a G3 with a KT index of 7 plus that will impact power grid, satellites, GPS, high frequency radio, ham operators, and so on. This is to be a global event. Auroras will be seen down to Antarctica, New Zealand, Europe, and in the U.S., Washington State, Oregon, or in this area, down to Iowa, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York. So the top one-third of the U.S. will be seeing auroras likely tonight. So that's going on. And now we'll talk about Jakarta. A sea rise has been occurring for years about six inches per year. Now, Jakarta is the capital of Indonesia. So we have Russia, China to give you a geographic reference point. Indonesia is below China and Vietnam, Thailand, so on. So since 2019, uh, the Indonesian government has been building a new capital this is Jakarta on this island. This island is believed to uh, be going uh, under the sea at six inches per year. So they're going to move their population of about 11 million people to an, an adjacent island, the Kalimantan Island. The new capital will be Nusantara. So now, Jakarta, 40% of it is currently at sea level, but the sea is rising six inches per year. Now, this goes along with that recent information I gave out uh, that a Texas A&M prof, uh, Gammon, said that around the U.S., we, can, we have rising sea levels. This also correlates to what we've heard from Mike from around the world, that sea levels are rising on a global basis, and that we can expect a large uh, water event. Now, my question is, uh, the cost of building the new capital for Indonesia moving from Jakarta to the adjacent island, $35 billion. They began in 2019. They're supposed to finish in 2045. Well, what about the predictions we've been hearing about an ice age in 2030? So that's going on. So I wanted to bring this out. We are seeing global uh, sea rise levels going on. And now I'll talk about what's going on with Israel. So we have Israel, Gaza, and we've been hearing about these protests going on in the U.S., which I take 
to be a uh, Soros orchestrated uh, a series of protests at American universities allegedly to gain support for Israel. I think that's probably going to backfire. Now what we're seeing Israel do, supposedly there's some kind of Hamas hostage deal on the table, but Israel is saying, no, no, we're going to go into Rafah, even if uh, Hamas can produce some hostages, and we're going to take that. We're also going to take a part of Lebanon, where Hezbollah, a proxy for Iran, has tens of thousands of rockets. So, that's going on. So, a little more specific news. Uh, I have, this is from a Patriot subscriber who has friends in both Israel and Iran. And Iran friends said Israel would not bomb Iran. And Iran wants the evil stopped in Israel. That means the genocide in Palestine. And Iran loves President Trump. So, thank you, Patriot subscriber. Now, Hal Turner's news about Israel. Uh, we have the movement uh, of some of the U.S. military assets. So we know we have Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is withdrawing their gold from the U.S. We have down here Oman and Yemen, the Red Sea. And now we see a movement to the Mediterranean Sea of the Eisenhower Carrier Group plus U.S. destroyers moving from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. The Houthi in Yemen continue to hit ships in the Red Sea, but there are fewer and fewer ships trying to go through the Red Sea to get to the Suez Canal because insurance companies are not willing to put forth insurance. Now, how Turner's information on April 27, there had been many nations dropping food and water in um, Gaza. I believe it was in this area near Rafa. And then uh, Israel bombed the aid that was dropped. They will not let aid trucks in. Uh, Israel's um, war plan against Gaza appears to be either bomb the Palestinians or starve them. Okay, Hal Turner on April 30, <coughs> excuse me, Israel. So we've got Jordan right here, Iraq, Iran. So now, on April 30, Israel sent assassins inside Iran to us in Tehran to assassinate uh, an uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard asset. And then in Lebanon, Israel warns France. Israel is going to enter into a Hezbollah war. Israel plans to take one-third of Lebanon. And in Rafa, Israel has uh, sent in on April 30, uh, Israel forces the 98th paratroopers and the 167 armored division. And on May 1, yesterday, Israel uh, to Hezbollah, Israel prepares to take uh, one-third of Israeli land. So that's going on. And now, today, May 2nd, Turkey stops all import and export associations with Israel, effective today, 
May 2nd, and that's according to a Bloomberg report. So that's what's going on in Israel. And now we'll talk about what's going on with Russia, U Ukraine, and the NATO. Because we know that NATO currently has something like, I think, 150,000 troops now amassed. We have Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania. Okay, so we've got this going on in Ukraine. We have uh, a Russian military inside. So the Russian military had been 250,000. I believe that was Colonel Douglas McGregor said recently they brought in another 100,000. That would be roughly about four days ago. And now today, uh, May 2nd, Hal Turner reports they're also bringing in an additional 150,000. So we have coming in here 150,000 more Russian troops. They have 250,000 in plus the 100,000 uh, that came in along the front line about four days ago. So that would give us a total of 350, uh, 450, so about uh, half a million Russian troops currently are moving into Ukraine. The MI6 this afternoon gave warning to uh, Kiev to move all of their troops and resources to concentrate them around the capital. Uh, this afternoon, Russia is going into Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. And they are also to encircle Kharkiv. Currently, with all of these troops, uh, there are Ukraine troops in this area now that are being encircled. So that's going on today. And we've been hearing that uh, Russia, uh, that NATO is to bring in F-16s, that's the U.S., also Mirage planes, Mirage, also Typhoons and Gripens. These are coming from uh, the U.S., France, Europe, Germany, and they are to be housed and at bases in Poland and Romania. So they'll be at bases in Poland and Romania where they will be flown, rearm, refuel, maintain. Now, Hal Turner is putting forth this. Apparently, NATO thinks that they can get away with uh, housing these uh, planes in Romania and Poland, then flying them in to Ukraine. It would have to be, uh, my F-16s require an almost perfectly smooth airstrip. Well, there are very few of those left in Ukraine, but Haltrunner's analysis is NATO, he believes, thinks they can maintain these planes, fly them into Ukraine, land them, and then take off again and uh, use them against Russia without Russia uh, responding against NATO. I uh, don't see that coming forth and... Uh, about uh, three or four days ago, Hal Turner had covert intel that the training program in the U.S. to teach Ukrainians to fly F-16s was 
pretty much a failure. Uh, the cover story is it was a language barrier. I submit uh, it most likely is uh, that the Ukrainian pilots cannot master the mind interface that the U.S. Uh, is using in the F-16s. So, uh, the best that the Ukrainian pilots could do inside the U.S. with regard to F-16s was as some of the Ukrainian pilots could take them off from one U.S. military base inside the U.S. and land them at another U.S. military base inside the U.S. But the military assessment of Ukraine pilots uh, actually operating F-16s uh, in a, a fighter pilot uh, position in a war combat setting was zero. So then, the thinking was, well then, we can't actually have U.S. military flying the F-16s against Russia, so we'll have the F-16 U.S. military pilots resign from the U.S. military and become mercenaries. Now, I have a couple of questions there. So if the U.S. military uh, mercenaries operating uh, under orders of the U.S. military, if they're killed in combat, do they still get a U.S. military funeral? Do they still get U.S. military death benefits? So we see a lot of questions here. But the thinking, uh, and I believe that it is true of other nations, France also had a similar plan to have their pilots resign from the French military, become mercenaries, and operate the French planes. It's possible Germany and other nations in NATO have similar thinking and We've been hearing about hundreds now of NATO officers and mercenaries in the past week, hundreds, being killed inside Ukraine by Russia. So, we have that going on. And Russia has said, if you have these planes uh, and then you have your pilots fly them against Russia to kill Russians, then Russia is going to let go of many of their strategic bombs, including nukes, and they would sink the island of uh, England and uh, also hit uh, NATO capitals, uh, certainly in Germany and France, and also hit decision-making centers in the U.S., which most likely would be Washington, D.C., Langley, Virginia, New York, uh, locations in Georgia, plus multiple U.S. bases in the U.S. And that's why we've been seeing in the last two to three weeks the U.S. FEMA, the division and other agencies doing nuke practices with American citizens. What are you going to do if your city is hit by a nuke? We see these practices going on in Florida, in New York, in Los Angeles, California. So a heads up, America. The psychopaths that are running NATO, the shadow NATO, the shadow U.S. government, and the shadow governments of England, of France, of Germany, and other European nations are tossing their militaries out to be um, uh, taken down. So... It's good to know what direction your shadow, deep state operated parts of your government and military are going. So, we recently saw uh, Russia move past Orentino and now Kramatorsk and Slavyansk 
are on the chopping blocks and they are moving in that direction now a few days ago april 25 we saw so we have lithuania poland kaliningrad is a russian enclave and there's a small area part of it's in lithuania poland and uh that extends into Belarus called the Suwaki Gap. So we have 120,000 troops along the border. We have NATO digging bunkers. And so that's going on. And we have heard that a NATO plan is to uh, try to take the capital of Belarus, Minsk, and then move their forces into Belarus. And we have this. A NATO plan is to bring about a coup inside Belarus. And NATO has 64,000 U.S. troops, 33,000 NATO. Of these, 20,000 are in Poland and the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So, yeah, that's going on. And now we have this from Borzikman, that on April 25, we had Russia strike and kill. This is one of the reports about killing NATO officers in Ukraine, taking down two U.S. HIMAR launch locations, and that was adjacent to Donetsk in this area. And now we have this. On April 26, we have seen uh, NATO uh, with Atacoms try to take down Crimea. And they really want to take down the Kerch Bridge. That's a NATO plan, we understand, to happen May 7 or May 9. He, we're even hearing dates. And so NATO had tried to hit Crimea with Atacoms. And according to the U.S. Time, uh, New York Times, uh, putting forth the NATO plan to take out the Kerch Bridge that was in the New York Times. And uh, Russia was able to take down the Atacoms. So that's going on. And now a second report of Russia killing hundreds of NATO soldiers and officers and also taking out Patriot Air Defense System. And this is being reported by foreign affairs media journalists. And we have this. 90% of the Ukraine air defense is operated by NATO inside Ukraine. And French intel, the French military are operating inside Ukraine disguised as mercenaries. And they're promised a lot of money by the French government. On April 27 is when Ukraine uh, tried to hit Crimea with Atacoms. Uh, Russia took down the missiles. And U.S. media reports that the attack on the Kerch Bridge has been given the green light by the U.S., Washington, D.C., or the Pentagon. Now, this afternoon, today... May 2nd, we have this, that Russia has hit Odessa, and they also, uh, I believe, took out uh, NATO officers and mercenaries, and the, uh, many are dead and wounded, and that strike on Odessa 
actually happened, this is May 2nd, U.S. time, but it happened May 2nd, night time, in this part of the world. So a few hours ago, Russia hit Odessa, and they took out many uh, NATO officers and mercenaries, and they hit weapons uh, depots. They also hit Nikolaev, which is in this area, and hit Russia hit underground NATO storage areas and also camps used by Ukraine and mercenaries. And then uh, a few hours ago, we learned that an additional 150,000 are now moving from Russia, traditional Russia, into Ukraine to assist in part of this to circle Kharkiv and also to encircle Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. And this uh, was the report that came out this afternoon about the additional planes going to NATO forces and to be based in Poland and Romania. So that's going on. Oh, yeah. We had also another wet bites the dust. We had... Uh, a report of a Russian special forces sniper taking down a Klaus Schwab assistant, Kiva Allgood, and that happened in Kiev Friday, uh, actually uh, Friday, April 26th, and uh, Kiva All Good was taken out by the Russian Special Forces because the deep state had a plan to crash the Russian economy by injecting trillions of fake rubles and increasing inflation. So that's going on. Yeah. All right. So a short prayer, I'll use a modified version of General Patton's World War II prayer. Father, we ask that you give us good weather for battle, that you guide us from victory to victory, and that you crush our enemies, domestic, foreign, and off-world. And we say thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and many call Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and he is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.